is it worth it to open a booster case of Star Wars Unlimited? That is what I'm going to find out today as I open six boxes, all from the same case. Star Wars Unlimited Spark of the Rebellion. Very, very fun game to open packs for. And of course today, because I'm opening them all at once, we're not going to be talking about if it's worth it for the gameplay experience because you know what? You get, you get a lot of gameplay experience if you want to from opening six boxes. You can take your time and talk about that more in, a, in the video. Is it worth it to buy a booster box? So today we're checking out financially. Financially, is it going to be worth it to open this booster case? And of course, and of course, the entertainment part, right? Because there's a little bit of entertainment with it as well. If you don't have any fun opening booster boxes or booster cases or anything in between or above or below, you probably shouldn't do it. But if you'd like finding Millennium Falcons, look at that. Very first legendary of the case is a foil Millennium Falcon. Very fun hit. And those Falcons, they've been moving up. But the prices, I mean, the prices on cards, they have been moving a lot this week. It has been a very well, a very exciting week for just, if you, even if you just like watching prices move around, it's been an exciting week to do that. Vader, have you seen Vader today? Vader is moving wildly. So of course, as we're doing this and we're trying to open up a whole case, um, whether or not you get your, <laughs> oh my goodness, whether or not you get your value back will very much depend on how many Darth Vaders you pull. Speaking of the man, of the hour, there he is himself, Darth Vader in the cardboard paper, I guess. Yes, there he is. Darth Vader number one has arrived and I really do hope, I really do hope that he is just number one of a couple. Now, as you're opening a case, so on an average rate, you're gonna get about three legendaries per box. That's your average. And if you get below that, then things are in trouble. But with that being said, there's 16 different legendaries. So you're going to get about 18 legendaries per case. So the averages are pretty good that you're going to see most of the legendaries within your case. Now, of course, there will be duplication. You will probably not very often get every single one of them. But from my experience, and I've opened a few cases here, my experience has been that the distribution is pretty good. It's pretty diverse. And every once in a while you see somebody say, oh, I got, you know, some crazy amount of some one, you know, card in their case or their box. But in general, I've found that the duplication is relatively low, relatively low compared to some other card games I've played, a first hyperspace foil repair there. Um, and actually, the last couple of cases that I've opened, I've gotten either 19 or 20 of the regular version legendary cards. So I've actually been hitting a little bit above rate. And hopefully that means that we're not going to go below rate on this one. Um, I've opened, yeah, just in the last 24 hours, I've opened another, my goodness, I think I opened eight cases. I did not film them all. Unfortunately, I did not have time to film them all, but there were some fun hits and Vader was everywhere in there. So we're hoping to see some more Vaders here. Oh man, I saw a green foil in the back, but it doesn't have a seven, does not have a seven. So we know that is not our friend. It is Mace Windu though. So we're hitting our third legendary in this box. Rocky is asking how many hyperspace uh, foils are you gonna get on a case per average? That's a good question. And so the hyperspace for legendaries, I believe is supposed to be around one in every 200 packs, which means you're not guaranteed to get any in your case. Look at that Millennium Falcon. Okay, so here we go. This is a very good start here to the case. First box has got our three regular legendaries and one foil and Falcons and Vader. Like these are good ones to hit. Yeah, so on average, your case is not gonna have a foil hyperspace. Um, legendary card in it. Now, when it comes to the rares, I don't remember the specific numbers to that, but it is also not very high. Um, you do not get one in every single box. And I want to say the last case I 
two cases I opened this morning. Oh, I think I got, I don't know if I got, I can't remember if it was 12, not 12. That would be too many. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what it is on the hyperspace sprayers, but it is less than one per box. And we'll have a good, we'll take a good look at it today to see what we get. And on those ones, I mean, you're going to hit the average, I think, pretty often. Once you get below, yeah, legendary level and even the hyperspace rare level, you're going to hit those averages most of the time. You're not going to get a case usually that's going to be like double what you're supposed to get or half, usually. Usually. Of course, uh, you know, as long as you're opening the full case, the variance is not going to be that big. At least it hasn't been from my experience. If you've had a different experience, let me know. I'm always I'm always excited about hearing about these variations of what you can get in cases. Yes, Matthew, we do have Vader already. We don't waste time. Um, <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing pretty well with Vader. I don't know why, but our luck Vader luck has been the one thing that's really been rocking for us here with Star Wars Unlimited. I did opened six cases yesterday and I had nine regular Vaders and a hyperspace Vader and a foil Vader. So and nine, that nine was actually the legendary I got the most of. And then this morning I did two more cases and I got four, four Vaders, which again was the highest number of legendaries so very happy on the vader count so far and look at this box one we got our fourth regular legendary and yes the vader i was just talking about this a little bit ago matthew but his prices have gone through the roof and i'm i'm curious i'm very curious about it it's obviously it's exciting to see because it's it's fun to see uh, cards not go to the tank right it's fun to see all the people who bought them, bought them on the first, you know, release weekend. Now you're feeling pretty good that you bought those cards. Um, <laughs> and you're not feeling so great if you're one of the people who didn't take my offers uh, when they were sub 40 per Vader. Um, but uh, it's fun. It is very fun to see him moving up. I've, yeah, I've, I list them and then I sell out of them. And I've moved through quite a few Vaders, a little Wampa here in our last pack. Ooh, these hyperspace ones. That one's not worth too much, but you know, he looks cool. He looks cool. So that's box number one of the case. We are, you know, if we just stop right now, we're ahead, right? Right now, this is a great place to be, but you know the rule. We don't stop when we're ahead here on Master Set Man as we keep on going because we want to know what's in the rest of the boxes. And that is the most important thing is, right, finding out what's in the next box. So box number one is a win. Game box number one is a very, very good win. And as you're thinking about value in these boxes and these cases, boxes, we're not going to open multiple cases today. We will do one. We will only do one. I only have time to open one today <laughs> and one and film it. And so as you're doing this, a lot of the value, though, it's not just in that legendary slot. There is quite a bit of value in the rare slot in this game, which has been different from a lot of games I've been playing lately. Uh, even in Magic, usually the rares are, most of them are pretty, pretty not exciting. But there's a lot of value in the rare slot. Of course, the rare foil slot. And then in the hyperspace areas, even in the rares and uncommons, sometimes even the commons, you can actually get a decent amount of value. Sabine is a nice one to see there. Rook is our friend. And then the infiltrator's skill. Just a nice, nice shiny foil. Yeah, and those hyperspace, I just listed a bunch of hyperspace uh, foils and non-foils on TCG Player, and they do go for pretty good prices, like you're saying there, Matthew. Not all of them. Not all of them are super wild amazing, but they go for good prices, especially if you have play sets of them. So if you get a play set of them and you can list that on TCG Player, of course, people are willing to pay a little bit more because they don't have to pay shipping three times on it. So there is... There's some good value in these boxes. Yeah, but of course, like any other TCG, there are boxes that are big, big misses. So we're hoping not to, but this one is a big hit. Here's what I'm talking about. Overwhelming 
Barrage, I believe when I looked this morning, it was still at what, $35, $40 on TCG Player. And yes, it does have sales at that price point. So again, it's just an uncommon hyperspace foil, but it is a very, very good one. I'll throw it up to the top just because, because why not? You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to. I don't want to get things too messy up there. But that one, there's a few like that, that if you're lucky to hit them, they are worth a good amount. And of course, you always want to remember too, when you're looking at sales on TCG Player, just because you see a couple of sales doesn't mean that those are the only sales that have happened anywhere. There are way more sales happening off a of TCG Player than there are happening on TCG Player. There's a lot of activity happening in Facebook groups, in stores, in person, websites, all over the place. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at cards, because especially when you're looking at the big fancy showcase cards, a lot of people just don't want to buy it off TCG Player. They want to go get it somewhere else. Aggression. Aggression. First legendary here in box number two. So, so far box number two, I mean, the barrage actually was pretty good. Pretty good. I was going to say we're behind, but we're not. We're not. We're doing very well. We're doing pretty well at this point. Rallying Cry, Uncommon, Foil. So it seemed like, from my experience, even the, even the kind of, from my perspective, least desirable rarity point, which would be the regular foils, those ones are moving pretty well as well. Pretty well as well. Count Dooku here, he's a couple dollars. There's a lot of rares down there that are hanging on for value and building a deck is not super cheap. A lot of people thought it would get real cheap fast, but it has not. Cunning, hyperspace, legendary. There we go. We're gonna have to move some stuff around here because we're gonna run out of room for displaying everything. Oh my goodness. Let's get some of this mess out of the way. Ooh, another hyperspace. Love those forests. The forests are very, very nice looking. So here we go, that was box one. In box two, we got an aggression and a cunning hyperspace. Uh, I don't know if you get five hyperspace foils per box. I mean, I can, I can just tell you, once this box is done, I can tell you what we get in these two. Uh, right now, I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm halfway through. It might be about five. I have not done as much tracking here in Star Wars Unlimited as I do for my normal flesh and blood openings in part because I had no plan on opening all these. <laughs> I had no plan on doing it. But, uh, you know, I had a good experience with my first couple of openings. And that was back when Vader was $40 a card. And, you know, it's just been fun to keep going. So I am enjoying the opening experience. And I'm finding that the value is there most of the time. Most of the time. Now, it's not necessarily the value is not there in a case if you are trying to build a specific deck. It is, you know, my better cases, the better ones will have two Vaders in it. Very rare that you're going to find three. Unless you're getting a hyperspace version or a foil version, then you might get lucky. But if you're trying to build a big Vader deck or... Boba, or, you know, whatever kind of cool deck you're trying to build, Vigilance. Getting your one case is not going to do it. For the Legendaries, though, it will get you probably halfway on a play set of rares. We've got something shiny in the back. It's blue, and it's a hero, but I do not believe it is Luke. I believe it is the old man. Let's see, do we got the old man back here? We do. Old man Obi-Wan Kenobi. Not as good, actually, as that overwhelming barrage, but very nice. Here is our first rare, our first rare hyperspace foil. So rare hyperspace foils, they are not common. Oh, my goodness, Matthew. See, you'd have to open an insane amount of boxes to sure you hit a hyperspace foil of what you wanted. You would have to open very, very many boxes. Um, very many. I've opened quite a few, and there are a ton of hyperspace foils that I have not seen. A ton of them. Um, the uncommons. Oh, yeah, one in 50 boxes. I don't know about that. I'm not sure on the uncommons. 
I opened quite a few boxes yesterday, and there's, I mean, there's plenty of uncommon hyperspace foils that I don't, didn't open, wasn't able to list. Um, so it's just, you know, it's very hit or miss on those. There is no guarantee at all, which is kind of what makes it fun and why they have some of the value. Yeah, I think you'd be doing pretty well if you got them. Certain card in 50 boxes. Spark of the Rebellion. Snow Trooper. But these foils, the common, common regular foils are all over the place. I'm going to actually, I'm going to see if I have enough to even put a play set of those together. I don't know if anybody, it will be interested in those, but I'm going to see if I can do it. The Bright Hope. Oh, the Bright Hope Hyperspace. I don't think it has any sales on TCG Player, but it looks really cool. <laughs> it looks really cool. Any of those ones that have like a big planet in the background on the side, like that and the Devastator, the art on those is stunning. So here we go, box two. That's the end of box two. Box two was, uh, you know, our hyperspace foils actually did most of the work. We did get a hyperspace cunning, but only two of the regular legendaries. So there we can see we're kind of making up for that bonus legendary we got in the first box. It's not really bonus, it just came from box two. So bonus if you bought only box one, but again, we don't do that. We saw, we found the good, the not good in box two. So box three, hopefully we'll be back on track for a regular three legendary box. Um, we did get one hyperspace legendary so far. So we're on track for those. I'm averaging one to two in most of the cases that I'm opening. So if we can pull, if we can sneak ahead of that, get three, then we'll be really rocking. And it'd be really fun if we could find one of those hyperspace legendary foils. I've not seen a foil legendary Vader hyperspace yet. And I've not seen this guy in his big fancy showdown showcase form. Let's call it showdown. I like showdown. Showcase is too close to something else, but another rare hyperspace foil fallen lightsaber these lightsabers are cool oh yeah oh yeah the foiling is so nice the foiling is very very nice in this game so two rare hyperspace foils so if you're so far here heading into box number three and we'll get these piles cleaned up a little bit we're going quick as you can tell because we want to find the good stuff force lightning first legendary in box number three I've opened quite a bit, and so we just gotta, sometimes you gotta get going. By now, everybody's seen the commons. If you haven't seen the commons, you can go back to the first opening, first video, where I take my time a little bit. But now it's just time to rock. Find those syndicate lackeys. Tarkin Town, Count Dooku. Not a bad one to get. Of course, you're really looking for Red 3 and for who else is our friend we're looking for. K2SO. Those are the big ones in that rare slot at the moment. Ewing. Is it Ewing uh, Reinforcements? That one's really kind of come up nice. Hyperspace Chimera. That is only our second. There we go. Change of heart. Only our second rare non-foil hyperspace. So the non-foil rare hyperspace cards are very rare as well. And that is why, that's why you see the prices for them still hanging on. Energy Conversion Lab, always nice to see you. Yes, for a cause I believe in is also an expensive rare. That one has hopped up quite a bit just in the last what, 24 to 36 hours. Job of the Hut. If you can get a Job of the Hut hyperspace foil, that's a nice one as well. I opened a second one of those this morning. And ooh, he's he's a funny dude. He's just a funny dude, isn't he? Smoking cinders. That's the rare. Is that the bottom rare? I think that might be the worst rare. Smoking cinders, which at least price-wise, I can I can see why. I can see why. I'll put it that way. Confiscate. Bombing around. Oh, confiscate again. Come on. That's one of the lower commons. That is. So we're halfway, almost halfway through box number three. And we are feeling 
you know, we, we lost a lot of that uh, excitement that we had at the beginning of box number one. Let's put it that way. We had Vader within what? A couple of packs within the first six. And then now, well, now we're down to everything that is not Vader. <laughs> No Bobas, no uh, Lukes. Really would like to see that kind of full split here. Confiscate again the takedown hyperspace, the hyperspace cards. I've said it too often, but they just, they're very cool. They're very cool for anybody thinking about creating a card game. Make sure you put uh, K2SO in there. Oh, nice foil version there, right? Or also, just make sure you do some sort of borderless card. I think they, they're just so good. It's the new modern way to make cards look awesome. And it's, it's funny, but it looks so much better often than doing really fancy stuff to your cards. Sometimes just getting rid of the borders enough. And you can see that like even with the showcase cards, the showcase, they even, they take away the hyperspace part, right? Right. They take away all the lines on it and it's just a big borderless card and it looks amazing. And you know, they were thinking about that as they put that on their top tier cards. Nice pack, Heroic Sacrifice is a good one, followed by Super Laser Blast. Like many of the legendaries, Super Laser Blast has also gone up in value. It has also just been creeping up there. Yoda's not doing a whole lot, but red three. There we go. There's our first red three of the opening. So if you're opening a case and you can get uh, multiple copies of some of the bigger rares, like red three and K2SO for a cause I believe in, all the red ones, <laughs> if you can get a couple of copies of those, you're doing pretty well in your case also. One, probably one of each rare, I don't know what, 1.5 is what you would be expecting. You should be able to put a rare place it together in two cases if you get a perfect distribution um, you're not going to get a perfect distribution from one case or two cases and yeah i've had plenty of plenty of times where it's like okay i got 12 of this rare and six of this one so at least on those ones yeah you're going to get some big big variation but i think in most cases most cases you're going to get one of each one not that you should be buying a case to try and get the rares. <laughs> That's not the way to do it, right? Let's see here. Nightflux says it would be awesome if all the non foils were hyperspace. The full art makes cards look awesome. Yep, it does. But part of you know part of what makes them feel even better is the fact that not every card is like that. So, I mean, I agree with you. Seventh Sister, that's a nice one. I agree with you that it would be really, like, just pure look-wise, it would be better, in my opinion, to have them just all be hyperspace. But they do feel more exciting when you know you can't just get them anytime you want every single card. This is one of my favorite hyperspace foils. It is just a common. I don't have a foil there, but that is one of my favorite ones. The foiling in this game, it's good. It is particularly good on every card that has a laser <laughs> of some form on it. The cards that don't have lasers, like this Jedi Agitator, is like, you know, it's, it's, it's decent, it's fine. But the foiling just feels kind of, you know, there's a little bit of light going on in there, but it feels more flat and a little, I don't want to say generic, but it feels a little too just, here's a big brush over the whole card. Bombing Run's a nice one with home one behind it, followed by Ezra. But once you add those lasers and different things, that's when you really see the foiling process kind of just excel here. And yeah, I like that. That was the end of box number three. So we got four legendaries in that one, Force Lightning, Change of Heart, Super Laser Blast, home one. We're halfway through the case. At this point, um, we don't have any We've got one duplicate, right? We've got two Vigilances. We have two Falcons, but one of them's foil, so I won't count that as a duplicate. Um, otherwise, you can see here, the legendary spread is pretty good. It's pretty even. It's not, again, it's not generally that you're gonna get four of this one and five of this one. 
and nothing, you're gonna get a pretty decent spread, but I'm gonna bet, I, if I had to bet now, I would bet we won't get every legendary. Usually there's one or two I've found that are missing. But we got Vader, and that's what matters. At this point, if you don't get Vader in your case, it's not a good case. Vigilance, nice hyperspace one. That is our second hyperspace legendary. We got a Cunning and a Vigilance. And now, of course, of course you could get a good case without Vader. But it's so much better if you do have Vader. Strafing Gunship is a nice, another nice rare to be hitting. course we'd love to see a showcase and here's okay we we're just talking about the other day why the, the only thing I dislike about these packs and how they've done it is they put the showcases in the front and this is exactly why exactly why look at that look at that thing now I don't know if that's from something pre going into the pack like with the cut or not but I just don't put your best card at the front of the pack don't do it it's not worth it. Same thing here. Don't put that best foil at the back of it for a cause. I believe in just when we were talking about another nice rare. Now we're probably not going to do a full like price check or anything at the end of the video because the prices, I mean, they're really moving all over the place. Avenger. Very, very nice one there with a hyperspace consortium star viper. Now the prices are moving a lot. I listed, yeah, I listed a bunch of Vaders last night at 80 on TCG Player, and they are all gone, and the price has moved up past where I had set the price at, red three. And so it's like, I can imagine even after I finish this video, there might be people running the price down or up in either direction. But so far, it just hasn't seemed like there's been, we haven't hit that ceiling yet. And I don't know. I don't know if we're going to hit, when we're going to hit that ceiling. I don't know if at some point here we run out of boxes or if the opposite happens and there's some stores that have a lot of boxes, decide, you know what, it's time to get them gone on solo foil. Very cool. It's going to be interesting to see. And again, there's a lot of, this is, this is different. You can't compare this set that you're opening or that we're opening that we're experiencing you can't compare this directly with the latest magic set the latest flesh and blood set the latest whatever tcg set you shouldn't compare it you know apples to apples because this is set one this is set one of a game and so anybody who's buying star wars they're buying this set they don't have any other option anywhere else to go they can't just buy two cards from the set and then finish out a deck with cards from a different set or something like that. Anything they're putting in here, it's all going into one product, it's all going into one singles pool and more singles than, you know, in your average non-first set are being used in decks because, again, that's just how big the card pool is. So it will be very interesting to see how long this kind of big wave lasts of movement and activity and prices going up. And it will be interesting to see if or when we get devastated because you just never know. You never know with a card game. But it's fun to see that Devastator there. That's our third legendary in this box. We're in box number four, I believe. I know you can't really tell here from my amazing piles at the top. We'll, we'll do some nice review, look at it later on. But so far here in box four, we've got the Vigilance, Avenger, and the Devastator. If you're just hopping in on the stream, we're opening a full case. We've got my favorite foil. I don't know if it's my favorite, but one of my favorite foils in the back. Let's see. Let's see. We're going to pause. We'll take a look at it. Look at this guy. Look at this one. I have been tempted to not sell any of these, but I have sold them so far. Look at that card. This is a gorgeous card. Like This is the kind of card it's like, okay, give me a couple binder pages full because it's not super expensive and it just it looks cool. And it reminds me of X-Wing. You know, you wanted to run that little TIE Swarm. And I know you can only put three in your deck, but it would be fun to have a little armada of those. And look at this, our second foil K2SO. That does not happen too often where you get the same 
foil rare within your case. Right now we've only got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, because I got one in the wrong pile. Sorry, that is eight. We will get there. That's eight. Two of them being K2SO, that is good. And actually, this is a pretty good spread. So Han Solo is not doing a whole lot as far as value-wise. Count Dooku is doing well. Seventh Sister, Jedi Lightsaber, and even you know Regional Governor. I've had so many Regional Governors move in. That's a pretty good uh, split on our rare foils, though I would not expect that. That is not uh, generally what you're getting in a case, let alone a box. Sorry, we got to move more cards here because the common pile continues to grow and continues to cause, create a hazard, a filming hazard, pile hazard. I don't know, we got to come up with a good name here for that. Mr. Krennic is here, a little restock. Get some more lightsabers. Look at that. Galactic Ambition. Now, oof. People aren't paying a lot for this card, but look at it. Very fun. Any card that's got that big Death Star on it is pretty cool. That's cool. So we got a... That's our third one. Our third rare hyperspace foil. So I'm going to say we're ahead on those. Three and four boxes is pretty good. You do not get one in every box. Dispatcher. Palpatine Fighters for Freedom. Welcome everybody who is here. Nice seeing about 40 of you hanging out here watching this. Let me know if you guys are still opening Star Wars, if you've moved fully on to singles, or if you're just avoiding it at all costs, let me know. Let me know in the chat. At this point, it feels it still feels pretty good opening Star Wars. Coming from a value perspective, it feels pretty good. Again, your odds... I don't know what the odds are always, but let's just put it this way. The odds are not bad for any TCG. I think any box I've opened in the last year, the odds are really good in this one. I'll put it that way. If, of course, you got the, you got the plan for how you want to move stuff. Bail and the Asteroid Sanctuary. Another nice-looking hyperspace foil. I probably just should have done Master Set Madness for this set. I should have done it based on how much I've actually been opening. But I chose, ooh, it just felt too risky. Felt too risky. I don't know, maybe. Maybe we'll actually, we'll see how set two comes out, how the rest of this goes. But maybe I'll be thinking about doing some cunning stuff with set two. Well, we don't even know the name for set two yet, do we? Or whenever that comes out. Maybe I'll even think of trying to open a complete master set, one of every single card. That would be fun. That would be very fun if they can keep the excitement up for our first Fets Fire Spray, followed by Old Job of the Hut. Old Job of the Hut. Two more packs in box four. We already hit our three normal legendaries, and we got one hyperspace being a vigilance. So we're not hitting super big on our hyperspace ones. Got the militia there. So that first box really was the only box of power that we have had. And that's the last pack. Uh, the next three boxes have been very, yeah, very yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say yeah. Yoda. Yoda ends up here at the end of box number four. So that one again was not amazing. Not amazing, but not bad. And this is where. This is where, of course, you're going to find that the more boxes you open, you know, the, the better spread of cards you're going to get and the less likely you're going to get hammered. If you're just buying one box, you know, you split that between three people here. Uh, first person did amazing. Uh, second person did pretty good with that overwhelming barrage and an Obi-Wan in the same box for hyperspace. Uh, third box was, mm, you know, it was a box. It was a box. Fourth box was, you know, another box. <laughs> oh, man. Rocky says he just got his boxes in. Only four uh, rare and one legendary hyperspace foil in two cases. Oh, my goodness. In two cases, huh? Well, so the... 
I mean, that's about right for your legendary. Uh, for the rares, I would hope to see more than four in two cases, but on legendary, that's right on point. If it's one in about 200 packs, you know, you shouldn't be expecting more than one in two cases. You're really lucky if you do. You're lucky if you get one in a case. Um, but curious what else you got in there, because you said uh, you liked what other stuff. Did you get a showcase? We've not hit a showcase here today. Those sneaky things. Oh, man, they just pop out on you. Well, there we go. Evan says Shadows of the Galaxy is the next set, according to Polygon. Perfect. I like that. Anytime they put shadows in the name of a set, you know it's going to be good, right? Unless, unless you're thinking Lord of the Rings. That's, yeah, you know, that's what they did to us. Old shadows. Let's not go back to that. That's a different day. That's a different story. Bright Hope Force Lightning again. Okay, so we're starting to get some more duplicates here. Um, more. That's our second one, right? So Force Lightning. I'm going to clean this up here so you can see this. We'll review the whole case at the end. We will come back. We'll just leave Vader kind of sneaking out there, but everybody else is going to kind of be pushed to the side. If I had more space on the table, I could just keep it just legendaries on here, but no, we can't do that. We can't do that today. I don't know how I would fit that. There's so many piles in this. I've got, oh my goodness. So I've got hyperspace for everything, and then I've got leaders, base, commons, uncommons, rares, and then uh, then foil version for each one of those. Then you have that hyperspace roll, and then you got legendaries on top. It just takes a lot of space. Second foil, job of the hut. So we're getting a ton of duplicates in our rear foils. But not going to complain since uh, a couple of them were pretty good. Seasoned Shore Trooper. That's another one of my favorite. Ooh, change of heart. Not one of my favorite. But that Shore Trooper, that's one of my favorite hyperspace cards. Oh, man, you guys got a Boba. Nice. Very nice. I still have not seen that hyperspace friend. Not hyperspace. Uh, showcase. Man, that's the one I want to hit. It's the one everybody wants to hit. Job of the Hut. Take down. So, so far, I mean, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to really add up the numbers. But so far, this case is not feeling like, wow, you know, we really did it here. It's kind of feeling like, yeah, you got a case. <laughs> It's not feeling like a terrible case, though. It is not feeling like a terrible case. It's kind of just feeling like a middle of the road. You got a Vader. You got some cool hyperspace cards. You got a Foil Falcon. So it's not bad at all. But it is definitely no, you know, it's no showcase. No double Vader. No Lukes. You do like to see a Luke. If you're going to miss a couple legendaries, you would rather have it be change of heart. <laughs> there you go. Ryan says he opened three boxes, got two Vaders and two Lukes. Yep. That is pretty awesome. And you got a Luke for $12. Nice. Very nice. $12. I mean, that's the price to grab a Luke. Ha! Matthew, this whole case is for me. This whole case is for me. So no boxes being bought out of this case. I did add a couple box breaks on my channel. I mean, if somebody wants me to break a box for them, I will hopefully be able to start doing those box breaks again tomorrow. Today, after this case, I'm not going to have time to open up more boxes because I've got a lot of orders. Han Solo, look at that duplication. We've, we'll check that at the end if I remember. I feel like we have more rare foils that have duplication than we do not at this point, which is very strange. Anyways, yes, if you want to do a box break here on the channel, I do that over at mastersetmanus.com. And if you want to grab one of those, I have, even if somebody wants to open just a few packs instead of a whole box, uh, you can check that out. But I will not be able to open those until tomorrow, probably. Because, again, I'm probably, by now, there's probably over 100 orders piled up. And so, I gotta work on them, and that's after beating down the orders 
multiple times. We have, we have been unable to get to that glorious zero that you like to be at red three. Nice to see a second one of those. It's been very difficult to get down to zero orders on my website, or not on my website, but on TCG Player. Lando Calrissian, there's that Chewbacca. There's that Chewbacca. Boom. Got a few of those. I have a few of those now. That's only our third uncommon hyperspace foil in box five. So somehow we have as many rares as we do uncommons. That is not usually the case. Admiral Akbar. What do we got? Three more packs? We got three more packs in box five, and then we'll head on over to box number six. You know, box five here again, another not amazing looking box. Blast change of heart, force lightning. They do not equal to the box price. But we still ooh, ah, Infernal Four looks cool. Wolf adds a little bit. But again, actually a lot of the value is in the rare slot. We have that red three in different um, wolf. I mean, your average rare is not 50 cents or a quarter. Your average rare actually holds some value when you add it up. Again, the prices have moved, moved quite a bit, but I want to say it's, it's above a dollar or at least near a dollar. Chimera last foil card in that last card in that box. But so if you're getting, even if you're getting a dollar or each rare is worth a dollar, and you're getting about 20 normal rares, 20, 21 normal rares in a box. You know, that's $20 on your box right there, just in the rares. And that's if you don't hit any of the good ones, right? If you get red three, like in that last one there, like you're doing, you know, you get some decent value, which is why some of those legendaries are not super expensive because there's a lot of value in other places now. We're gonna move our legendaries here. We got one more box. Now, again, like I said earlier in the video, we're gonna find out how close we can get to hitting every legendary in this case. Again, I don't think we're gonna hit every single one, but my experience has been the legendary distribution is pretty even. So having not seen a Luke or a Boba yet, I'm gonna bet that we get at least one of them in this box. I'm gonna bet we get one. I'm hoping we get two. I'm hoping we get both, but I would like to get one of them. Draconis, the case has been, it's been okay. It's been an okay case. We're looking here on our last box. So we're going to find out if we can, you know, kind of swap this from an okay case to a great case or from an okay case to a more okay case. <laughs> I don't think we can't go to bad on this one. If you hit Vader, you can't go all the way down to bad. I mean, he's pretty much paying for a box at this point. So everything else in his box, you can just kind of move that value on over to the next one. Beautiful common foil. One of my favorites. All the snow ones look great. I do wish, though, they had a snow legendary. Because every time I see snow in the back of the pack, I think, oh, okay, not a legendary. It's not a legendary. Oh, I missed that wampa. And look at this here. Every once in a while, they do some weird upside down stuff. I guess this is the card to do it for. I have found upside down cards in a lot of strange slots. And it's usually just like one or two, sometimes three packs in a row. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know why those things happen. I wish I knew. I wish I knew how they got just that one card in upside down. Like, is there somebody who's like, you can just stick in their hand in the machine on the assembly line, he's just like, you know, flips one card over. I would love to see, see the action, see what actually happens. Snowtrooper Lieutenant, nice one. Zeb, old Zeb, there is a kind of cool looking one. And then, ooh, aggression. So aggression is our first one there. That is a duplicate. 
So this box is going to work to prove me wrong. We missed on our first legendary for getting a new one. Frontline Shuttle is a cool looking rare. Redemption. And Spark of Rebellion, that was a th triple rare pack. One hyperspace, one normal, and one foil. We did see one triple. Did we see a triple legendary pack once, didn't we? That was fun. That was a really fun thing. Come on, showcase. This is about the point in the case where I start to feel like, yeah, we're not getting a showcase. It's not happening. <laughs> 14 packs left. For whatever reason, to get to this point, I'm kind of like, ah, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to always cling on to the hope too strong tactical advantage. Showcase would just, you know, pop this up. Perfect. Any showcase at this point. Millennium Falcon. There we go. Okay, we're going to do duplicates. We're going to do duplicates. Luke and Boba are just sneaking away. I can't remember if there's any other legendaries we have not hit yet. Again, sometimes, like I said, you'll get 13, somewhere between 12 and 14 of them, often in a case. So it'll be sad if we only miss, if we miss two and the two we miss are Luke and Boba. That will be disappointing. Then, you know, when that's the case, then you start to wonder, okay, so where's the other case that has them all in it? That's the other case. That's the one you want to open. For every good case, Every time somebody's sneaking those good cards in, you know, somebody else is not getting them. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, knowing that there are cases like that. Electro Staff. A little bit of a mark on that one, probably because it's the last card in the pack. Maybe they'll fix that. I don't know. We'll see. We all have to tell them to change where they put the foil and where they put the showcase so that they'll modify it for the next set. Unless they've already started printing it in that one, and then there's no hope. <laughs> there you go. Rocky says he got his showcase in the last couple of packs of the box. It does happen. Oh, my goodness, it does happen. I find, though, I have more fun. I have more fun if at this point I just kind of, you know, in a sense, you know, I don't want to say give up, but just be like, yeah, it's probably not in there. And then when it is in there, it's super exciting. But if I kind of hang on to that feeling of like, yo, it's going to be in there. Oh, we're almost there. And then it's not there. And then, ah, you know, that's a little bit more disappointing. Vigilance. Oh, my goodness. Gorilla attack pod. No Bobo. Bobo. No Bobo. Yep, no Bobo. <laughs> it's going to be Bobo today because he's not here. You can't have your name correct if you're not even going to show up for the video. So I shouldn't complain. I did get a hyperspace one of him earlier today. So a hyperspace foil. So that's okay. You know, you can't get them every time. Fortunately, I didn't film that one. That would have been a fun case to film. That one would have been like, yeah, go buy more cases. This one's more, I don't know. I don't know. We got two packs left, two packs. Ryan says there's something's refreshing about this game. I agree. I think there's some, some nice, refreshing things about this. I, I think there's a lot of things about it. Spark of Rebellion General. Krell, another rare hyperspace foil. So we're doing well on these. Very well on these. More than the uncommons. Oof. Last pack. There's something there. Something there. It's a prepare for takeoff. And then we got one more option, huh? One more option. It's Jeddah City. Jeddah City. Oh, and there, command. Okay, there we go. We snuck out a foil legendary at the back. We snuck one out. Was that our... No, so we got two foil legendaries. We got the Falcon and Command. Let's do a quick check. That's the end of box six. No showcase is sneaking around. First thing I want to check before I forget... Let's look at these rare foils. So we had we had a lot of duplication in here. We had two Jabas, two K2 SOs. We had uh, two Hans. For all the rares that there are, it's kind of wild that we got that, but really not a bad rare suite uh, for the foils. 
there's a decent amount of value in there. And then of course we had our hyperspace ones with Corel Ambition, that Fallen Lightsaber and Obi-Wan. Very good, a little bit ahead on that one in our uncommons, that overwhelming barrage, that was a big hit. I mean, that's that's legendary level hit at the moment right now. So very nice, but again, only three of those and five of the rares, I'm okay with that. I'm okay hitting some more rares. And then let's take a look up at our legendary section. We did not get everything, as you already know, but we did not get everything too. So let me do a little bit of a, Shuffle's not the right word here, but a little bit of a sort. Here, we've got more duplication than I normally see. So let's see, we're gonna start off here. We have two Vigilances. Uh, I'll put the hyperspaces on the side here. So we had a Cunning, Vigilance, and that's all we had for hyperspace ones. And so we had two Vigilance. We had Double Aggression. We'll just go with our uh, event suite here, right? Double aggression. Sorry, three vigilances. Oh my goodness. How many change of hearts do we get? One change of heart, cunning force lightning, double change of heart, double force lightning. So moving away from, well, well there's one more, like super laser blast. That's a nice event to see there. We got double super laser blast. So look at that, one, two, three, four, five with doubles. Six with doubles with the Falcon. Okay, so we did get a lot of doubles. And then we got one of each of the big ships. And then we had Mace sneak in there with Vader, of course. He's in the back. Vader's there. Foil Falcon, Foil Command, two Foil Legendaries. For the regular ones, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So right on the money. No bonus legendaries in this case. Uh, so not the best on that one, but this feels like a pretty, I'm going to say this feels like a pretty average case when you're not getting, you're not getting a showcase, no hyperspace foil legendaries. It feels pretty average to me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but definitely not the, <laughs> not the worst case, not the best case. Madtown Hobby says fun game to open. Vader or bust. Yeah, we got one Vader, so we avoided the bust. If we had missed that Vader, this would have been more of a, I would, I would, I would consider it a bust case. Um, but I think it's pretty good. And again, there's a lot of value when you're thinking about opening a case. The value is not just there. If you only look there, then you will very often, very often see, hmm, it wasn't there. The value wasn't there. But if you look at the rares and you look at how value some of these rares are i'm not going to get them all but i'll try and pull out some of the more valuable ones at the top you know strafing it's not super super expensive but it's a couple dollars count dooku's uh three four dollars uh the governor's i don't know the governor's just sells a lot i can't remember exactly how much it's worth red three fence fire spray you know let's see how many of those we get within the case. The conversion lab, it's about $5 still, three to five, depending on where you are in the line. A second Fets Fire Spray. That regional governor, it'd be interesting to see if we get duplicates on any of them. I know I'm skipping by a bunch of rares that do have some value, four cause, red three. Like most of these again, oh, so we did get three Fets Fire Sprays. Second conversion lab. So again, sometimes you're going to get a play set of rares, even in a case, I think most often, play set of a certain rare in a case, I should say, but most often you're not going to get a full play set. I don't think that's possible. Strafing, again. And then look at that. I even snuck that old Obi-Wan down there. So, look at that. Interesting. Was there no, there was no K2SOs in the regular slot, but we got two foils. So, I mean, this is this is not terrible value in a rare slot for a game like this. Check it out. Four cause I believe in. Kind of vaguely putting these in order of value, but we had three Fets Fire Sprays. I know I'm stressing some of you out while I do this. <laughs> it's not gonna be perfect. It's 
not going to be perfect, Count Dooku. Jetta City's definitely not <laughs> the one we're looking for, but that's not bad. Three red threes, three Fets fire sprays, one for a cause I believe in, two Dooku's, four strafing gunships, a couple energy labs, and a couple governors. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Matt Town says pretty easy to make EV. And that's only true. It depends on where you sell it, right? If you try and if you are doing your sales on Facebook, uh, it's tough to <laughs> tough to make a good EV on something here. But uh, if you're doing it on TCG Player, it's not too bad. It is not too bad. Anyways, that's what I got for this case opening. Again, there's a lot of value even in these common and uncommon hyperspace cards. And I mean the rare ones here. I didn't even look at this pile, but these are not zero dollar cards. Right? Even if it's not, they're not the biggest hits, they're not zero dollar cards. Palpatine's a few bucks. So don't forget that. They're nice things. Anyways, if you like this, if you want to see more Star Wars on the channel, don't forget to hit that like button below and that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys soon. Hopefully to get back to doing some more regular content. But right now it's just, it's a little bit of madness. But that's what we do here. We'll keep some madness going. Anyways, we'll do some box breaks in the near future. If you want one, check it out on my website. We'll see you so soon, so, so soon. So peace out.